we revenge, getting even, wanting payback, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Our American culture is fixated on the idea of revenge. Just ask Taylor Swift or John Wick. But tonight, I'm going to present an alternative to these vengeful ideas. That alternative is forgiveness. I like to consider myself a bit of an expert on the topic, not because it comes easy to me, but because I've had to practice it over and over again. The biggest thing I've ever had to forgive is a doozy. Many would say it's unforgivable. When I was a 19-year-old college student, I was kidnapped at Knife Point, just half a mile from this very campus. One minute, I was washing my car, and the next, I was handcuffed and blindfolded in the back of a stranger's car. He drove us out to the middle of nowhere, and I was at his mercy for several hours before I managed to escape. My attacker was later caught, tried, and convicted. By all appearances, justice had been served. But for years, the trauma of what had happened to me would not let up, and I remained a frightened shell of the person I'd been before the attack. Nonetheless, I eventually chose to forgive him. Not because he asked for forgiveness, because he didn't. And not because he deserved it, because he definitely didn't. I chose to forgive because I deserved it. Let me emphasize that it is a choice, a choice that I made not just once, but repeatedly. I believe one of the reasons people resist the idea of forgiveness is because they don't understand what it is. Forgiveness may not mean what you think it means. I'm sure you have heard the phrase, forgive and forget, but forgiveness is not forgetting. There's no magical forgiveness amnesia that takes place. Forgiveness is not condoning the wrong, and it's not saying that what happened was okay. It does not excuse the wrong act. What happened to me was not a mere mistake that I could or should easily excuse, but I still chose forgiveness. Forgiveness is not dependent upon reconciliation. You can forgive but not maintain a relationship with a person. You can forgive but cut ties completely and put necessary boundaries in place. Forgiveness is also not dependent upon your feelings. If we waited until we felt like forgiving, we may never forgive. I'm still hurt by what happened to me, and I likely always will be. There are many days I don't feel like forgiving, but I still choose to do so. So that's a little bit about what forgiveness isn't. So what is it? First, as I mentioned, it is a choice requires recognizing your negative emotions and then choosing to do something about them. Forgiveness is a release. It's recognizing and releasing your negative thoughts and feelings and releasing them, regardless of whether the other person deserves it. I have found it brings peace of mind and frees you from anger. It empowers you to recognize your painful circumstances, but not let that pain define you. I believe that forgiveness is a gift. While it can be a gift you give to the offender, more importantly, it's a gift you give yourself. It's an act of kindness, an act of healing. It's a chance to rewrite the story and start a new one in its place. Forgiveness is a redirection of your attention. It takes your attention away from the offender and what they did or didn't do, and it redirects it toward your own experience and your own heart you turn your attention away from wanting to get something from the other person, and you turn it toward providing compassion to yourself. I have found that forgiveness is freedom. Even though I had escaped my physical captivity, I remained in emotional captivity to my trauma for years. But forgiveness provided freedom from that bondage. By allowing myself to forgive, I released the misbelief that somehow refusing to forgive would right the wrongs of the past. Forgiveness is living in the present with an eye toward the future and no longer living in the past. You're free to experience the present in the here and now without that past lens of anger, hurt, and disappointment. You can show up as yourself, changed though you may be, 
and experience what is, pre- what is possible in the here and now. So all of that is great and points us in the direction of forgiveness. But you may be wondering, how do you actually do it? How does one forgive the unforgivable? It is a skill, a skill that can be learned. The first step is to identify how you're feeling, whether it's angry, regretful, resentful, sad, whatever that emotion is, name it and identify it. Become aware of that negative emotion and feeling and choose to do something about it. Some people call this mindfulness, but to me, it's simply awareness of where you are versus where you want to be emotionally. After you've identified how you're feeling, make a commitment to yourself to heal. Recognize that you're doing it for yourself and not for the offender or anyone else. Then, try and change your perspective. This is easier said than done, but it can be done if you work hard at it. Acknowledge that your current emotional distress is not from the original offense. That's right, blame it on your feelings and on your interpretation of the offense, but not the offense itself. Look for the silver linings. They may in fact be there. What have you learned or what have you gained from the offense? It took me years to recognize that there was good that resulted from my trauma. This is not to say that what happened was good, but I did learn that I had a strength and resiliency inside of me that I previously had no idea existed. I also discovered that I could use my horrific experience to help others. The next step may be controversial, but try and humanize your offender. People make mistakes. They screw up. They say and do things they shouldn't. I know I do. I know you do too. Yes, not all errors are created equal. I wasn't forgiving my attacker for merely stepping on my toe. I was forgiving him for kidnapping me, repeatedly raping and assaulting me, and essentially robbing me from life as I knew it. It was not a small transgression I could easily forgive, but I still found a way to humanize him. A key step for me was realizing that he must be hurting and in a lot of pain himself. As the saying goes, hurting people hurt people. I didn't need to understand the root of his hurt, just an understanding that he was hurt as well. This is not to say that I felt sorry for him, and it is not to excuse his behavior. It was just my attempt to humanize him. Finally, make sure that you're seeking peace, not justice. The two are separate and different. You may never obtain justice, but that should not prevent you from seeking peace about the situation, and it should not prevent you from moving on with your life. Want revenge? The best revenge is to live a life well. Turn your focus away from your negative emotions, which is still giving the offender control, and turn it towards the good. Look for gratitude and appreciation rather than regret. Forgiveness is a process, often a long one. Forgiving the unforgivable will not happen instantaneously, and some people have to work harder at it than others. I will not stand here and tell you that forgiveness is mandatory in order to heal from trauma. Healing is like a thumbprint. It is unique. What is healing for one person may not be healing for another. But I have found that forgiveness is healing for me, and I believe it can make a positive difference in your life as well. So... The next time you find yourself wanting revenge for something that somebody did to you, even if you think it's unforgivable, I encourage you to challenge those thoughts and be open to the idea of forgiveness. Thank you.